Morning everyone, um, just getting ready for some uh, fishing this season and uh, chatting to a ghillie on the North Esk, so we're going up to Balm on the North Esk in March which is really exciting and um, we were just chatting on Facebook and uh, talking about sunrays and with a few of these micro sunrays that um, people have been tying, I wanted to tie a set of bigger sunrays, so this is a 2 inch uh, aluminium tube um, and I'm going to do a full size range going down into all the different tube sizes um, even down to a half an inch as well um, such a good fly to have, quite a simple pattern but I'm going to tie it in a slightly different way um, and you'll see why in a sec so first starting off with 80 threads uh, now I'm going to put in uh, glow bright number 11 it's not an underrated fly, lots of people use these um, well, sunrays, but there's obviously a million different variations of, of this fly, so I'm just going to tie this in at the head, leave a little bit of space at the very front there, for reasons you'll see why in a minute. So I'm just going to tie this in, sometimes I use this on a bobbin holder, but for this I'm just going to tie it in, because I'm only doing a really short tag, if you like, at the front, I'm not doing a full body or like that, just a nice bit of colour pop or a target point um, for the fish to, to see, especially if you're moving these quickly. Um, I mean I've caught fish on sun rays stripping them insanely fast, I've caught them not stripping them at all, just tweaking them back of all sizes, mostly larger sun rays to be fair. Um, and this is obviously of a larger variety. So I'm just tying that into the point there, so again just a short tag there, doesn't need too much tying in to keep the head nice and small because I need it to be as small as possible because I'm going to tie in four different wings on this to keep it keep it upright and keep it horizontal and for the uh, the top wing not to get caught on the hook hopefully. So when I finish this, I will do it before usually, um, I'll put a bit of hard as nails, where's the camera, put a bit of hard as nails on here, um, on the yellow there just to make it solid because obviously if the teeth get into it they can yank it back and ruin the fly. So first I'm going to put in a bit of fox uh, in white, just uh, as a short underwing and again just a little bit, nothing too dramatic, nothing, not too much. I don't want this to turn out to be a massively bulky unit of a fly. I like them to be quite streamlined, um, but I'm putting quite a few wings in this for obvious reasons, which I'll share in a sec. So I'm just going to put this basically the length of the, the tube here, just as the first wing. So just tie a couple of ties in, so I just do a couple of ties there like that and then just cut it off leave it nice and neat so tying that on I don't think the heads need to be particularly neat on these but you know you always want to make them as neat as possible so for the next one I'm going to tie this um, Ty this is and that's this is actually a Yuma Raccoon Zonka so it's Zonka but I don't use it as Zonka I use it as a wing it's really really soft it's got a ton of movement in it um, but again I'm just keeping this profile just a slightly longer than the white it's really soft it's got loads of movement in it just cutting a little bit of that off so it's just slightly slightly longer just to build this wing up so again just tying that in nice and neat I mean the good news about using the soft hair is obviously when you tie it in it's not too bulky so pull it back and trim it off as neatly as possible So you can see that it's now building up quite a nice 
height. Because I'm going to put some, um, I'm going to put some goat in here, which will hopefully make it go even further back. Right next, I'm going to put another layer in of longer um, I'm not actually sure what this is I mean it's really I'm going to say it's kind of temple dog of some sort it's not so it's much much longer in length so I'm going to put this so it goes quite a way back so this is going to be the longest version of this fly that I'm going to to make So stretching over the back of of these ones, I might even have a little bit too much on this one, so I might just strip it down and half half the amount of hair that I'm going to use. So I don't want to bulk out the head too much because the last wing is quite thick. So tie this one in. So this is where I might start using a little bit of super glue on the thread just to just to secure everything in place, especially for the last wing, because um, you'll end up getting a bit of a, a bump at the front, just there. But I've got a bit of, I've got enough space in there to make this work, and I don't mind the head being too tall either, because uh, I'm going to put some eyes on this. Right, so the last wing that I'm going to put on is goat. So goat's a little bit harder to tie in. Um, it's, it doesn't flatten down like fox or runner or any of those kind of things. So I'm going to keep this really, really thin, but I'm going to make it quite long. So the fly profile itself is probably going to be about five, maybe even six inches long. Uh, and I've obviously personal preference for everybody. I really like this. Just gives it a load, a load of movement to the fly. I've put no flash in this fly at all, and I'm not going to put any flash in it. That's just again personal preference. I mean, I thought about putting a little bit of angel hair under each section, but I don't really want it to be too flashy, to be honest. And I don't really know why, but that's just what I'm doing. Right, so I'm just cutting the goat. So there's a bit of a build up here. So what I'm going to do. Just keep it as neat as possible. And there. Right, I'm going to get a bit of Gorilla Glue. Just bob it on the thread. So something I learned is don't put blobs of glue on your heads because it doesn't make any difference. You just end up having a, you just form a blob of glue on top of everything. And you know, for all I used to do it for Willy Guns, doubles, and things like that. And every time I did it, the hair would come out. But something I was told, and it really does work, is just put a little bit on your thread, and that should do the job. And it does. I haven't had any issues since I've been doing that. So line it on the thread rather than put it on the top. So effectively, that is the main part of this fly. But I haven't finished yet. So not forgetting that you'll uh, put some hard as nails on here. So I'm just going to tie this off like so. So effectively, that's been it. And at the end, I'll show you the full full width of the fly so you can see but it's it's pretty long right so I'm just gonna undo this a bit I'm gonna turn them on his side right this is the the fun part right so what I'm gonna do is with these ones put some little eyes on which I think is really makes these look awesome so it's quite a bit of a little bit of work to build these up to make sure they don't come off I mean if you hook fish on them you know, if you catch quite a few fish, sometimes obviously the, the eyes can come away, but hopefully they'll stay on for a few fish. So just pop these off, 
quite fiddly and I always end up, I used to always get my fingers stuck on the, on the fly so I just use a little pair of pliers just to drop the eye on so there so once that's on I'm going to spin it around the other way put a dab of another dab of glue on there get another right there's quite a few different ways to, to put these on but Stick them on first with a bit of super glue, and then I make sure that they're all lined up. So that one just needs to go a little bit higher, like that. Right, so I need to leave those to dry, obviously. But uh, the next thing that I'll do is probably put a, a little bit more super glue um, on the head I use Gorilla Glue just a little bit there and a little bit underneath then once that's dry uh, I'm going to put some UV on um, I've got the, the, UV, the Loon UV here and put it all around the eyes as well and then obviously use the um, UV torch and then when that's dry put a bit of uh, Mrs Hansen on again and then when that's finished she's done put a hook tube on the back Job's a good one. Um, it's a really good fly. I highly recommend it for anybody going salmon fishing anywhere, any time of year. High or low water, they're brilliant. Swing them, strip them, any way you like. They're such good flies.